Hello, ladies and gentlemen, freaks and geeks, trolls and derps. It's not my intro. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of that show that will not be named. I am Brian, or to Game Prince, whatever you prefer. And today, sporting this clean picture, excellent uh, sound, and a brand new Jules uh, Pulp Fiction haircut. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know you were picking it out there. Um, today I was hoping to tackle the subject, the phenomenon of Overlord, which is this anime series that's come out, and I was going to say stuff about it, but then I didn't say anything about it, and I said, you know what, if I want this channel to gain any traction whatsoever, I'm going to have to start, you know, sweetening the pot. I'm going to have to start doing, you know, shit that people are actually interested in. So... I figure I'm going to follow the bandwagon and, you know, start getting in there, start uh, reporting on the sh things that people want to hear. And on the side, of course, I'll also do the stuff that I want to talk about, but I'm, I'm hoping to keep a pretty balanced balance. So anyways, Overlord, yes, for those of you who don't know, and pardon me because I come from this frame of people who knows like a great portion of the show, but when it comes to the finer details, I'm a bit... Um, Overlord, starting with the beginning analysis, is about this guy. And in, I know in the light novels, it's it's Overlord's based off of a light novel series turned into an anime. Here's begging that it just doesn't become, you know, like a two, three season commercial, like fucking Devil is a Part-Timer, which I really want to see a season two of. Anyways, back on track. Overlord's about this guy. He lives in a... The world is really shitty. In the light novel, it's more or less described as, like, the world... You work till you're dead. And it's, like, absolutely horrible. And the only escape people have is by playing this online game. This, you know, virtual reality SAO thing called, uh... Yggdrasil. And in this guy, it's... The first episode takes place on the day that... Yggdrasil is going to close down. It's going to... The servers are going to... Go away forever. And this guy says, you know what? I've had so many great memories in here. I'm going to stay logged in until the servers go out. He does so. But instead of being logged out of the game, like would normally happen, this is an anime, in which case he does not get logged out. He actually stays in. Um, other weird things happen, such as everything becomes real. He becomes the lich that he plays. The magical m mage sorcerer lich thing that he his character, that's his avatar in the game, he actually becomes him. He's able to smell, touch, and in interact with everything. Things still pretty much basically function how they did in the game uh, that he used to play, but at, this, at the same time, he's very he's got to familiarize himself with everything. He, The only thing that kind of confuses me about the series, in the beginning at least, the first episode, is how he says that some things are different, but some things are the same. Like, he seems to know all about the, you know, the like the lands and the kingdoms and everything from playing the game. And I found it kind of confusing because he's like, oh yeah, these people don't like these people and yada yada yada, these guys are in war. But I'm like, how does he know that if he says, like, everything is so different? If everything changed, like, it's almost like the tomb was transported to another, the temple that they're in or whatever. Tomb of Nazarek, Temple of Nazarek, whatever, Tomb of Nazarek. By the way, they live in a tomb temple thing he called Nazarek. Hmm. The only thing that confuses me about it is that he, in the first episode, they tell you, like, the area around the tomb is different. It used to be, like, swamps or something. Now it's, like, an open field. And in the first episode, they dedicate some time to trying to hide it from the area around. But what confuses me about it is that, like, the swamp was the only thing that was different when you came to this world other than that geologically everything else was the same so that just kind of caught me off guard a little also i had a prediction i mean i'm i'm making this video with the assumption that okay you clicked on it you know what you know what overlord is so of course you know about the guardians uh, the people that serve him that were created by his fellow guild masters that were that are just Honestly, I think some of the funniest anime tropes ever. You got the the, the twins, the girl dresses like a boy, and the boy dresses like a girl. You've got, you know, the badass characters, the warrior characters, the bitch character, well, the 
supposedly bitch character until, what's his name, Momonga turned her into a love interest. And then you got uh, uh, the vampire girl. I can't believe I forgot her name. I was watching it yesterday. I was watching season two yesterday. Shout to the Blood Fallen. Shout to her? Yeah? Blood Fallen? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got it right. And she's just like, I, I find her funny as shit because that's just pretty much appealing to the whole lolly uh, portion of people that watch the show. And I like how they make it out as if, oh yeah, her creator was a guy that was into lolly shit, so. Hehe. <laughs> funny, funny. But uh, it's just a very interesting show. Like, it's been a while. Well, not a long while. JoJo-esque. It's, but it's been a while since I've gotten into an anime that was like this interesting and this different. Because Honestly, when I, went, when I go into anime, I don't go into anime expecting like oh god it's a video game one it's gonna be the same thing as sao because i know everyone i talked to was like oh yeah it's just gonna be another sao it's gonna and then they watch it and then it becomes this whole cultural phenomenon wow it was different no i go into it going maybe it's gonna be different maybe maybe expert expectations uh, are gonna be you know met and it certainly was with this series very interesting um, I was watching, I watched like half of season two yesterday. Um, I can't really compare, I don't have most reviewers and whatnot give you a comparison between the Japanese and the English, but honestly, I could not give a shit about the Japanese version. I'm English. I speak English. Well, I'm not English. I'm American. I speak English. I don't read Japanese. I don't speak Japanese. I don't like watching shit in Japanese. So I'm sorry I'm not that culturally diverse, but the English voice actors, I'd say it's absolutely incredible. That's the same thing I would say for, you know, 91 Days, Bacchano, and Helsing Ultimate. It's the same way I feel about those. Only with this, I realize that whenever I'm watching anime, there always seems to be, like, that type of, like, what's a good example I could use? Something like, here, here's a good example, here, Berserk. Now, Berserk, when you look at Berserk, do you imagine everyone as being Japanese? Anybody else? No? Good, because I don't. I see them all as, you know, European. Um, different than when you're watching uh, uh, Overlord, in which, um, sure, it's like the Japanese is the real world, but the concepts and the designs of said world are based off of, you know, um, English. Uh, people, white mythology, Caucasian folk, if you will, and that, where the fuck was I going with this, yes, um, let's see if you're watching something like, I guess, Ghost in the Shell, it takes place, I think it takes place in Tokyo, I don't know, I haven't seen, I can't even remember watching Ghost in the Shell, that was a while ago, but pretty much it's the aesthetic of just like, if it's even an aesthetic Someone uh, like a story taking place in an English setting, and the characters looking Caucasian, or a Cauca I'll call it a Caucasian setting, and then it taking place in an Asian setting, where something is like Dora Ra Ra, where sure it may have like half American or full American characters in it, but it mainly takes place in Japan, so it would fit that most of the characters, I guess, in live action versions, if they ever made one, looked. Asian, like you can imagine them as Asian, they are Asian, as it comes to Overlord, when you look at them, it's like, okay, that's like, even though they're drawn the same, it's like, I can make the distinction that because this is what, this is what mythology, this said thing is based on, everyone must look, you know, at least in my mind, everyone looks English, E, European, whatever the hell, and... I thought that was very interesting because I like the whole dynamic of he's a guy from Japan and it's just a total switch up from his life in Japan into like this new fantasy-esque European setting, I guess. I, I'm having a hard time explaining it. It's just like his, his adaptation to this. And I don't think many people have ever tackled this or talked about it mainly because they're, they'd probably do what I'm doing right now and uh, tripping over my words. But 
essentially, I just think it's interesting the setting that he's placed in. If I, if I could put it simply, the, the, the changed up setting, the pace of his life. And tackling what most people have been saying about the series, which I think is kind of funny, um, about him not wanting to go back to the real world, that he's in the game world and already where I'm in like season two and not once has he said anything about going back home. And I'm, and everyone everyone's like, oh, that's super interesting. But at the same time, it's like, wouldn't you not want to go back home? I mean, he mentioned that he has like no family to speak of. He's got a job that runs him to hell. Like, why not become the most powerful entity on the face of a planet? <laughs> you know, I I am curious though. Okay, first off, I'm gonna I'm gonna call a few things. I'm gonna make a few, few predictions about the show. Prediction Uno. Do you remember what's his name? Dammer? Dammerung? Not Dammerung. Uh, Doilage. Who's the Who's the dude? You know the demon with the tail and the orange suit. I'll think of it later. Anyways, I think he's up to something. Anybody else think that? Cause anybody remember the first episode of season one where he's walking up the stairs and Demiurge. There we go. Told you I'd get it. Where Demiurge is um. Uh, Momonga's about to leave, go outside and see the world and whatnot, and then Demi, you're just sitting up on his floor with, like, the four, uh, demon generals, and when he comes up, Demi, you're just kind of, like, <gasps> like, kind of shocked. There was that, and then there was something else, but basically it just, it stands to reason that Demi, you is almost like he's planning something. Like, personally, I thought they were gonna do something in season two where, like, one of the other guardians turns on him due to whatever reasons and i thought they were going to have some kind of thing where like each season one of them turns on him and he has to either off him convince him back or whatever but i i have this resting suspicion that demiurge is going to do something and i haven't read the i haven't even read the light novels mind you i've only i'm going off what i heard but that's my first prediction second prediction the person that's causing all this horse shit that is, uh, you know, sending all the crap Momonga's way. It's obviously a person that's in the game also. Obviously. I mean, if anything, depending on how long they stretch this. If this was me writing this, personally, I'd have it as some kind of thing where, like, a couple people uh, are still in the game. But they're, like, worldwide. Like, maybe pff, maybe five people. I don't know, maybe six. Seven. And then, like, they have some kind of thing where they build these six people up eventually, after the people all know each other and after they're done mingling and whatnot, they eventually build themselves up as, like, the gods of this world or whatever. That's what I'd have. I'd have, like, a couple people. That way not, not to keep it, you know, like, stale. Because, like, obviously, I think after Momoga conquers whoever the hell's sending all the shit his way, which is obviously another character who obviously another person who also got stuck in the game after he conquers said person he takes over the world and it's like what else is there to do that's it um i'd also be kind of interested to know that if a character goes into the game or got trapped in the game as a mortal would they still die of old age that'd be very interesting i'd like to check that out because obviously momonga's like he's a lich he, he's not gonna die he's He's an immortal dead dude. So I'm curious if he ever fought, like, obviously the other side, because we see in season two that uh, there are two people talking, there's a couple people talking, and they're talking as if, you know, like, ooh, an ancient evil is rising up. Obviously they're talking about, you know, like, Mamunga or some shit. And it's pretty much building the foundation of Mamunga setting himself up to be the bad guy, and the good guys are just kind of staying put and sending shit the other way. But by the end of it, Momonga's going to kick ass and it's going to be like, evil one for once, so in this case the story's different. And I, I'm digging that vibe. I'm liking it. I'll roll with it. And, um, what are my other predictions? I definitely think, uh, what is it? I've only seen up to episode... Six, seven, or something or other of, uh, I've only seen up to episode six or seven or eight of season two with the lizard men. And I think the, 
Lizard Men, this show made Lizard Men cool. It made them awesome. It made them lovable. It made them amusing. Like, I'm actually generally interested in people writing Lizard People now. They weren't, you know, they they weren't the fucking, uh, what do you call it? Anyone remember Chaotic? That really old, like, Dutch uh, card game? We all collected it. Don't Don't act like you didn't. Blowing like twenty dollars on those things. You remember with the with the they had like the iPhones. <laughs> they were the little phones, and they were like their your portal to chaotic. And you click the button, and you get transported to the flying world. A version of you stays here and does dishes and chores and shit. And another version of you goes up in the sky to play card games all day. Fucking amazing. Why'd they ever get rid of that? Anyways, where's my train of thought going here? Remember chaotic, where. And I lost my train of thought. That is absolutely horrible. It was such a good idea, too. It was something very interesting. Chaotic. Overlord. Chaotic. Overlord. And Overlord. Give me a second here. Nope, I lost the thought, and the thought's gone forever. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll rewind the video at some point, and then I'll probably put it in my next video. I'll bring it up as, like, a PS at the end. <sighs> and I guess that's really all I have to talk about, other than the fact that the show is colorful. That's actually one of the things that drew me in at first when I was watching it. it it's absolutely colorful. It's amazing. And it's one of those things where... See, the only anime that's really caught my eye in the last few years has been Jojo and One Punch Man. And, you know, uh, fucking, what's it called? Mob Psycho 100 for a little while. Until I, I couldn't find it anymore. But that was one of the things that definitely attracted me to Overlord. And it's the same thing that attracted me to Space Dandies. That it's just so damn colorful. And it's funny because the colors then draw you in and then and then you start unraveling things. It's like, okay, first you're drawn in by color, then you're drawn in by character design, then you're drawn in by, you know, dialogue, and then the music, and then it's like these layers you keep unfolding in an anime, and then eventually you just like once you reach the core center and you finally reach like I call it like the philosophical center. It's like you go through the art, you go through the designs, you go through, you know, the aesthetic and everything, and then you reach the core. And to me the core is the philosophy of the show and all the beliefs and all the whatever it carries with it. And um, once you reach the core of it, and then you're finally like, whoa, where you're at a point where you're like me, laying up in bed until three o'clock in the morning, going, I wonder what that meant. You reach that point, and that's uh, that's where I think at that point you really like you determine like what's your favorite anime. Like you're picking apart your the goods from the bads. You're able to separate them. Ugh. And that's essentially all I really have to say about this. So yeah, Overlord. If I had to get anyone to watch it, I, I'm forcing people to sit down and watch it. Absolutely. I got Hulu now. It's just absolutely incredible. I just dropped my glasses. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for joining me on another very special episode of that show that will not be named. I will see you all later.